These are all older horses, Gina, who galloped yesterday. When we built this, it was absolutely state of the art. It now looks so conventional that so everybody good. came to see it. Yeah. yeah. Do you have to replace the bed? That's what everybody always yeah. says. How <laughs> many times do you replace it? And it's once every 13 years. Is it and really? And we did it about, it works out at that. Yeah. And we did it about four or five years ago. So I think I'm probably not going to have to do it again. It's the most terrible yeah. job. Alpinista in behind North Lincoln. Righto, nice and steady, jog them on, nice and steady. Mr Mark, how pleased were you with what you saw from Alpinista this morning? Oh, she's fine, she's fine. She worked yesterday, so today was an easy day. She just did, as you saw, one canter and a swim, so she just had a quiet day. So it's a question of what's not trying to ensure that something doesn't go wrong. And what did you see yesterday that, that pleased she you? She worked well, she followed two nice horses, but giving them lots of weight, and she just followed them up. And so it all went well. They'll set off when they see me. Do you see my point? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there'll be four threes. She's the last of the four. Of the four, of the four yeah. Does she give you signs at home? Do you see what you need to see to know she's... She's always been a good workhorse. Um, and before she ever ran, the mother was a very, very stout stayer. And I was surprised to find myself starting her off over seven furlongs at Epsom when she won first time up. So she, she always had more speed than you were probably expecting. It's extremely exciting, obviously, to be involved in a mare of such high quality and um, you know I'm just extremely pr privileged and extremely lucky to be to be the one that's able to sit her on race day and um, see, I'm just very much excited now for the big day. We've seen it on the track she's gone from strength to strength with every start now five group ones later at what stage of her career did you think she might be up to reaching this sort of level? Um, before she first ran she you know she was showing a decent level of ability where you're hoping she's going to be above average and obviously with, with her pedigree you're very much hoping you, you're going to be able to get some black type for um, you know for her own breeder so um, but um, you know for, for her to ful ful fulfill what she's done now it's um, extremely pleasing and um, say she, she's not the flashiest worker in the world so uh, we probably didn't expect her to scale the height she has. Annabelle, you're her regular rider and look after her. She looks just the most fabulous filly to deal with. What's she, what's she like? She's a very laid-back character. She's very professional. She's such a pleasure to do in every way, and she makes my life very easy because she just really enjoys being a racehorse and enjoys every day's life here at Heath House. Yeah, it's amazing to see a thoroughbred like that, and especially a good one, because usually, you know, they'd have a look at something or they'd be on the toes. Has she always been that relaxed? Pretty much. She's always been a very good ride. I think that definitely comes from her dam side. They've always brought, brought very relaxed temperaments in and um, she's always sort of taken everything in her stride and she's definitely matured even more with age and now she just takes everything in and just goes about it very easily. This mare, she's very typical of her family, not only her grey coat colour but um, her temperament and dare I say it, they have a tremendous will to battle. One shouldn't be too read too many human traits into horses but they do seem to have a really really determined will to finish in mm. front. Now have you been with her since the very beginning? Very 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 yeah. first day I still remember for her very first day cantering on the heath and I, I didn't know then how good she would be now but I always thought she was quite special and she's definitely backed that up. And does did she, did she change at all in how the feel she gives you on the canters as she's gone through the, through the levels if you like? I think she's always found it easy but as she's sort of matured mentally and she's strengthened up and grown into a lovely five year old she's definitely sort of smartened up and each year she's always progressed and shown a bit more and each year she's sort of going up the grades and showing more of a turn of foot as well. Let's talk about her at the early part of her career because there were some mixed results at times. What were you thinking ability-wise? Well, I thought I'm not doing very well with this. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'm not doing very well with it, but uh, it all came right in the end. And she's now won five group runs in a row 
and uh, seven in a row, group two and a listed. So she's just been marvellous. When she won those three group ones in Germany, yeah. Mark, I feel like maybe she didn't get the credit. Maybe people from home yeah. didn't necessarily I think you're realise right. she was as good as she was until this year. I think you're right. Until, of course, it turned out she beat the art winner, Tasso. In, That's in the Tasso. Tasso yeah. So suddenly, all the people who've been saying, well done, those group three, those group ones don't amount to much in, in Germany. And when he popped up and won the arc, they all said, why didn't you run it in the arc? All the same people who'd said, of course, that the races weren't any good. And at the beginning of the season, there was some worry that she began her season later than anticipated. How much did that set you back and... and well, we had to wait. And as Kipling said, N and not be tired by waiting. We just had to wait. We wanted to do the coronation because, of course, we know she likes Epsom. And we wanted to do the King George. But she wouldn't come in a coat, and uh, so we just went. Nervous at the time? Well, it, it's, time passes slowly when you're waiting, always, doesn't it? The watch kettle never boils. And um, But she suddenly came right, and off she went to St. Clair and caught everybody's eye there, I think. It's Alpinista, who now leads from Barati in second position, just lugging into that one. Alpinista in front, Barati second, Bubble Gib third. They're clear of the others, and Alpinista makes it six in a row, and another group one. These are all the plaques of the famous people who trained here, and um, no one knows who trained any horse before 1861. Up when until then, began. it was the Derby winner. We know the owner, but not who trained them. Um, I see there's no date. No. Is there one etched in pencil? No, no I, I've always waited for somebody to put a bit of chalk, chalk. can't they? Yeah. <laughs> no decisions? No, no decisions. No. But you, you've referenced a few of your brilliant horses over the years, and obviously several of them related to, yeah. to Alpinista. Can you, can you compare them? Do you have a, a pecking order, if you like, to Mark? Do you uh, have one? How does she, how does she fit into Last second was the best, who was also that family. The reason I, Miss Rousing sent me the first one was I, um, with Paul Weber, I bought last second. And because she did so well, uh, Mrs. Rogers and uh, Miss Rousing sent me, or Miss Rousing sent me Alvarado. Because she did so well, of course, I got Alba Nova. Mrs. Rogers sent Hallelujah. And it was all because of last second. Mm. Where does Alpinista sit for you in, you know, in your She's been the straight, most straightforward. She's yeah. been the most straightforward. This is Alba Nova, and she was the biggest of them. And she's grandmother of Alpinista. Yeah. And she won those three group ones, but not until she was five. And only Miss Rousing will stick at it with one yeah. to win group ones when they're five and she had this marvellous year. And, uh, and uh, she bred Al Wilder, who was the dam of Alpinista. And then this is Al Barada, and she won two champion stakes. When you've had so many of the family through the yard, does it inform how you train future members? Of yeah, that a bit. Yeah. You must do it better, mustn't you? <laughs> if you? If you've had enough of them, you must have a slight age. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. unless you're a complete idiot. What do you feel are, are, are Sir Mark's kind of USPs, if you like, or strengths that allow him to sort of really nurture these horses season after season? Um, I think he's very meticulous, and um, certainly there's um, you, you know the attention to detail is is second to none. And um, say you know I've been here a long, quite a while now where I know the system's in place, but uh, you know sometimes he probably doesn't get credit for the um, you know he's in the past he's had champion two-year-old filly and hooray and. Marsha was an absolute rocket, and this filly's a you know a top-class middle-distance horse. But uh, you know he's he's here morning, day, night, and never misses a beat. So um, and you know he's certainly got the um the wealth of experience to go with it. So Mark is quite a character, and he definitely sort of keeps it, keeps us all on our toes. Um, but he's a, he's a pleasure to work for. He, he's a very good man. He's a very good boss, and he's he's given me some fantastic opportunities over the years, especially to look after horses as brilliant as Alpinista. And I'm very very grateful to him. So, how are you feeling about the race itself? And, and well, about it's her a very important chances? race. Selfishly for me, it's very important. For Miss Rousing, she's bred a St Ledger winner this year. If she could have a, if she could have a art winner, wouldn't it be marvellous for her? So. Um, 
and for the mayor, she's been wonderful. If she could win six Group Ones, it would be. It's you know, it, it, you just it might come off, might it? I have a feeling it won't, but it might. I think I'd be lying if I said I hadn't ridden a race in my head a few times already, and um, the Arc's probably the, the biggest race in Europe, and to be on a filly like her, who is, um, you know, she's got such a strong chance. I, I'm sure I'm going to be slightly nervous, but um, mainly just excited, really. Um, you know, these are the days you, you know, you work your whole career for, and to, to be at this stage to have a horse like her, I'm, I'm just extremely privileged and. I can't be thankful of Sir Mark and Miss Rising enough to give me this opportunity. Well, obviously, I'm feeling apprehensive, but at the same time, I've been in this game long enough to try and temper my expectations. The little one's been thrilled with the filly this year, or mayor, I should call her now. She's done everything asked of her so far in Paris at Saint Cloud first, and then at York. She would seem to be. Um, at the very apex of her form and capability, but obviously the most difficult hurdle is yet to be encountered in Paris. Do you look forward to it? Will you enjoy the weekend, Mark, or will it be um, pressure? Yes, I think it's plenty of pressure. The sales are on. I hate being away on a Sunday because I ring all my owners on a Sunday. I ring all 58 of them on a Sunday. So I hate being away on a Sunday. So it will be very, very busy with trying to do that and, and go around the yearlings and things. But if she wins, it will be no trouble, will it? I'd, I'd swim with her if I thought she'd win. <laughs> <laughs>